I already saw many of you laughing, and I can tell you that it's a very, very nice and very funny movie, and I'm very proud to welcome on stage the producer Corey Ray and the director Dan Scanlon. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hi. As, are you still satisfied with the movie? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. We 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 watched it a lot over the last few years, and uh, I can still watch it. I've watched it thousands of thousands. times. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, how how did the idea come up doing a prequel? Because um, it's it's like when they're young. So, yeah. so what was the idea behind that? Uh, well, we got together early on um, about five years ago, right. just to discuss if there was a movie to be made with the, the monsters' characters. We loved those characters, and we, we, we wouldn't make a story unless we'd come up with something we loved. So we just yeah. got together, uh, uh, myself and Pete Docter, the original uh, director, John Lasseter, Andrew Stanton, a big group of us got together and talked about it. And we knew if we did something, we wanted to tell a story that got into the relationship of Mike and Sully a little bit more. And... Um, that was when we thought, well, the best way to get to know them and their relationship uh, more would be to go back in time mm -hmm. and, and, and watch how it all developed, right. uh, which then just led to college. college, which we thought would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it must be a real challenge because it's, it's one challenge to sort of design a monster, but to make a monster everyone knows younger yeah. is something which is very hard, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it, it was a little bit difficult. We just, uh, you know... We thought about it, we talked, and we were like, well, we were all a lot thinner uh, back when we were in college. And uh, so we started out by kind of making them a little bit smaller, thinner, a little brighter mm -hmm. in color. And, uh, and then the animation had a lot to do yeah. with it. Um, it so. is funny, though. If you look at them from this movie next to them in Monsters, Inc., Monsters, Inc., they look really fat and gray. <laughs> it's like a rough couple of years. But, uh, yeah, animation helped yeah. a lot. Yeah, we Okay, animated them much younger. Because I, I read somewhere that you sort of um, did a research on young frogs oh. to, to, to find out I'd how a young frog sort of <laughs> comes from being a young yeah. frog to an old frog. Yeah, That's true. I believe yeah. that was the case, yeah, in the art department. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. So, and um, the, char the characters are familiar from, from Monster Inc., um, but what was the aim to tell the stories besides sort of Be the beginning of the, the friendship between Sully and, and, and Mike. What was the, 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 the idea behind it in the yeah. story? Yeah, I think the thing that got us most excited was uh, the idea of telling Mike's story. Mike is the, the lead character in this film. I mean, it's still a story about these two guys and their relationship, but, but Mike is really the character that we're with right. Right. through the majority of the film. And um, uh, we, we wanted to, we liked this idea of using the prequel of it uh, to tell a story about a character that doesn't necessarily get everything he wants the way he wants it. Um, being a prequel, uh, audiences know more or less how, how it ends, or at least think they, they do. Think they do yeah. um, and uh, it's very much a story about Mike going after his dream of being a scare. We know that that's probably not going to work out the way uh, he hopes. And we loved this idea. We felt like there are so many movies that say, if you work hard and never give up, uh, everything will always work out. Mm. And that is a great message, but it's not always the case, frankly. And it, it right. wasn't for a lot of us uh, in our True. lives as well. And we really wanted to make a movie that was, that was there for people uh, who are up against those walls, who had, had hit a roadblock with their dream, uh, to show them that, that oftentimes those roadblocks lead to, to greater things. Mm -hmm. That was what really excited us about this film, is that the, the, the message was very different than anything we'd seen. Mm -hmm. That's probably why everyone likes Mike so much, because you sort of see his weak side, you, you, you see the moment where he faces reality, and right. we already know that this guy is probably not the sort of designed to be a scarer, and that his way through the movie. So, um, he... He, he always wanted to be a scarer. He's really heading forward in the movie to, to do almost everything he wants, but there's some certain things happening, and one big thing is Dean Hartscrabble, and maybe we can see her now. Oh, great. Ooh, tough cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's probably the only really ugly thing, <laughs> or bad, evil thing in the whole movie. Yes, she's so beautiful, but she's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, she's really terrifying. How did the idea come up? 
Well, we wanted to have a, a, a dean that right. was one of the greatest scares of all time, so we really needed to, uh, to design her that way. And uh, we thought about what truly terrifies us, and, 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 and <laughs> this idea of centipedes came up, and insects, and creepy, <laughs> crawly things. Right. And we, um, we, got, we actually rented a giant centipede, a living poisonous centipede, and, uh, and the art department had it in this, like, plastic thing that looked like it would, they'd have coleslaw in it, it you know, <laughs> at, a, at a grocery store with tape on it. And uh, the guy who we rented it from said, if it bites you, you won't die, but you'll wish you were dead because the poison <laughs> will hurt so bad. So we're like, wow, that's the, that's the perfect thing to base her off of. And, uh, and so the artist really spent time um, studying it, and, 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 and that's kind of where her design came from. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's not only Mike, there's also Sally, as we know him. Um, maybe we can see also how they met for the first time. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Is it a fraternity pig? <laughs> yes, it it's is a, a mascot, mascot of... Uh, the uh, rival of the... school, I think, right? Field yes. tech. Yeah. It's a pig monster thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it must have been really fun to design this whole university world. Because somehow it is known for everyone, because everyone has seen a campus movie, yeah. even right. if we are not in the States. Sure. So our universities are a bit different than yes. probably yours, but we are familiar with these fraternities, with the parties at the fraternity houses. So how did you do the research? <laughs> did you actually went to universities? Yeah, we had to, we had to go visit schools, because it had been quite some time since uh, most of us had, had been to school. And so, uh, and our and schools were very different we're, we're too. We're different, yeah. We didn't. I didn't. I a didn't lot of have us went a, to yeah, art school, and that, that doesn't have fraternities and sororities in there. We knew no. them from American movies. Exactly. As well. <laughs> Most so of what we, we know about background. is from movies too. But uh, yeah, but we did go visit a number of colleges, and uh, and it was really great. We went to study kind of the campus and and the buildings and to help inspire the film. And, but we also noticed you know, the students and, and how young they were and how, how much pressure they were under, actually. You know, they're, they're having fun partying and everything, but, but really they're under a lot of pressure. Um, yeah, it's very real. You know, that moment in your life, you're, you're trying to discover who you are and you're, you're trying to succeed in, 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 in your you know, future career. And we really took that with us, too. Even though these are monsters trying to be <laughs> scary, to them, it should still have that weight. Yeah, they also have a hippie playing guitar, and yep. they play frisbee. Gotta have so a all, the, playing a guitar. all the images everyone knows <laughs> right. from a yeah. campus besides a lot of the studying. Yeah. So, is this research thing um, to you as a producer? Is this something really important for if you start a project like this that you're sort of really keen to what it's out there when you do it in an animation movie? Yeah, I, I think it is really important. We're, we're really into it uh, at Pixar, and I, I think it's important not only to kind of learn about that world or be reminded of that world, but it inspires other things, I think, down the road. It actually, I think, even going to visit the school, I think, brought up things that we didn't expect or, or you know, kind of gave us ideas about, about things that we wouldn't have even ex <clears throat> excuse me, expected. So it's, it's really good. It's, it's good for information, but also inspiration. So is it very much different to produce an animation movie than a normal feature movie. You have a script, yep. you sort of develop something, but is it different? Well, um, honestly, I've only ever worked in animation, so <laughs> I've never produced a live action film, actually. Dan has uh, written and directed one, but I've, I've never produced one, so... Um, but I, it's, I think it's quite different. I think a producer of an animated film is, is more hands-on on the day-to-day -day production. Uh, I'm in there, I'm in reviews every day, and, um, and uh, it's, it's much more collaborative between Dan and I. We're kind of working together uh, every day mm -hmm. for the course of production. Um, but yeah, I think the process is, is somewhat similar. I think we spend a lot of time at Pixar uh, developing the story, and it, it's, that's what we spend the most time and energy on. And um, from the very beginning, that's where we're focusing our energy. And, and we're making story tweaks all of the way up until the last year of production. Yeah. So, yeah. But it takes a longer time. Absolutely, yeah, okay. four, four to five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe we see another scene from, from, the, from the university, Great. like the fraternities. Yeah. It's not always easy on university. <laughs> no. <laughs> so do you have a favorite character? Uh, favorite character? Um, you, you go first. It changes. Um, I really love Dean Hartscrabble. I think uh, she's, she's amazing, and I think both her character and because she's not necessarily a straight-ahead villain. 
in this film, and, and we kind of like that. She's not an arch villain. She um, is really just a, an intense professor who is actually telling Mike and Sully things that are true. She's, yeah. not, she's not making it up, and, uh, and it's not um, out of nowhere. So it's, it's, she plays a, a good part, and, uh, and I just love her design. I think she's great. Yeah. I, I like Don. He was the, uh, the, one of the Uzma Kappa team. The, the, the Uzma Kappa are the guys you just saw, and they're sort of a team of um, scare rejects. <laughs> Uh, but Don kind of represents the whole group in a nice way. They're these very sweet, sincere guys who maybe gave up on their dream a little early. And uh, Don is a mature student returning to college, so he's, he's much older than the rest of them. But he's a guy going after his dream, and I, I love that theme of uh, it's never too late to give it another shot. Mm -hmm. um, so is it um, developing the characters? Do you have to put more focus or do them maybe do it even more complex because they're animated than if you have real actors hmm. or is it the same process because it's you yeah. cannot just ask someone hey do it a bit stronger or whatever right. so because you have to put everything in advance and have to have a real plan of how cl complex the characters are right um i don't know i mean i think a lot of work goes into characters both live action and animation but maybe the the difference is, is in animation, you really have to create the physical look of those characters. And um, you base that on the same thing you would create a performance mm -hmm. on. You know, you learn things about what the character needs to do to tell the story, and so right. you can make those decisions about how they should physically look, especially right. when they're monsters. I mean, you, they can be anything. But, um, you know, if you know that this character is a funny guy, then you make them funny looking. You know, you can, right. you can make those choices um, you can make a, a lot of very small, yeah. precise decisions in animation to I, help the story. I think directing the talent is a little more challenging, however, um, because they don't know where they are, right, when you're in yeah. there with, with directing the talent. They're in an isolation, but they're in a recording studio, and, and they don't have necessarily always other characters to play off of, and so mm -hmm. it's, it's up to the director to give them context and mm -hmm. make sure that, that they understand their role and, and, and where they are in, 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 in the movie. So I, th I think that part is challenging. Yeah. So what is the biggest challenge? Because when I read about, about the movie, um, there's certain things that didn't come to my mind, like if that there's grass <laughs> at the university. So how complex is it to, to make the grass looking like real grass or the fur? So this, is, this must be really hard work. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, you, you, we have to create every... Every single item that you see has to be created from scratch. It has to be thought of uh, in the story, then it has to be designed, then it has to be made. The grass uh, is actually simulated so that when a character walks on it, it indents and then comes back up. Um, the fur has to move when Sully moves and, and that all has to be simulated. There's a, a thousand things that, that have to happen uh, in every single shot and that's, that's why it takes four mm -hmm. to five years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there are very interesting uh, voices mm -hmm. in the movie. Billy Crystal, um, John Goodman, Helen Mirren, perfect for yes. Dean Hartscrabble. Yeah. Very British and yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> sharp. <laughs> so, and, and it seems that the actors had a lot of fun. Are they just um, involved at the moment when they're in the recording studio? Or, or they, do they sort of start earlier to develop the characters with? Uh, no, the characters are really developed before we involve any actor. Uh, you know, we, we think on the page about the character. We even design the physical look of the character before the mm -hmm. actors are involved. But then they right. bring so much to the, the role. They're chosen based on who these characters are and, and who we think can, can bring right. something to that. But it's hard to find spontaneity in animation when you're working, you know, 24 frames per second. So the, the actors really bring that. They can improvise in the moment and, and, and give you a take or, or even make a little mistake that ends up uh, adding a sense that this is all really just happening mm -hmm. in real time. Right. Okay. So one last thing uh, before you are invited. Um, it's also a great score. Randy Newman did a lot of movies, a lot of animation movies. Yes. But yeah. this one seems to be sort of like more student-like somehow. I cannot really name uh -huh. it because of the instruments, but it's very lively and it's very young. Yeah. So um, was he also uh, doing research? What students listen to, I don't know yeah. really, but it's, it's interesting, yeah. it's not his normal way of, of writing a score. No, we, you know, we, we, we were so excited to work with Randy again, uh, and uh, he did the score for the first, for Monsters Inc. 
And, um, but we knew that it, it had to have that college feel. And um, we talked with him early on about what that meant mm -hmm. for the score. And it, it kind of, you know, it meant getting that kind of marching band, drum corps um, kind of music and, and, and in a certain, you know, in certain spots. We needed to have that energy, that very youthful energy. Yeah. And uh, so I think it is, it's really different work for him. It's, it's a little different yeah. um, than he's done before. And yet, uh, in awesome. Randy's DNA is Monsters, Inc. Yeah. So, so even though he's not, I mean, we don't even use that many cues from the mm -hmm. original film. Right. Uh, because we want this to very much be its own film, a, a film that you could see separate of Monsters, Inc. if you had never seen it and hopefully still right. understand it. Uh, and they're at such a different moment in their lives, the characters. It didn't seem right to do the same feel as Monsters, Inc. But that yeah. said, again, anything Randy does, it just has that, right. that vibe. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now it's up to you. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I have a question for the director. Um, when I think about Toy Story or the older movies, it took about uh, weeks or months to render. And mm -hmm. uh, now, OK, the machines are a lot faster, but also the, the graphics are much more complex. And so my question is, how long does it take to render such a complex movie? Yeah, I, I don't even know. You would probably know better <laughs> than me. <laughs> I just I yeah. just take the weekend off and come back and it's done. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It's uh, rendering is much faster now, but we have added things that that have complicated it. So for this film in particular, we used um, a lighting software, Global Illumination, which by its nature requires a lot more rendering power. So we actually uh, went backwards a little bit in terms of. Uh, it, it took longer and we needed more uh, rendering power on this film than in previous films um, because it's going to take time to, to get the render times down and we didn't really have, we only had a couple of years um, to, to get that time down and so we'll keep working on it at Pixar. But, um, but yeah, I think, you know, with the evolution of technology, I think that will always be the case. You, you catch up and then you, then you come up with something new and then you have to face that challenge and, and figure out how to render it faster again. So. But the good news is we could re-render Toy Story over lunch. That's right. If we had to. <laughs> so. True. So, here in the front row. Huh? Um, I have a question regarding your development process. You said you spent a lot of time on the script. So, how much on average, how long on average is your development process? And is it a set Pixar process? Like, I don't know, from Disney, you know, he had these three rooms. One the dreamer and one the realist and one who made it happen and, and do you have like a set design process uh, mm. for Pixar or is it different for every movie? Um, it's kind of different for every yeah. movie. Because uh, each director works slightly differently yeah. and, you, and you have to embrace that and, and work how they want to work. And so, but still, I, I mean, development is of, of just the story is at least the first couple of years. And then we work on the story again all the way up until the end. Yeah. Probably three months before we finished, we were making small story tweaks and, and dialogue and changing lines. There's rarely so. like a, a script, like yeah. here's the script and now we go. No. Um, it's just always changing. And yeah. it's, the story artists play a big role in, in the story and, and, and developing the story and, and in some cases even writing some of the story. So the script's being written as story artists are drawing and it's all very fluid. Yeah. Okay, so you also stray a lot from the timing from the animatic. Oh, sorry? So you also stray a lot from the timing from the animatic? So if you oh. look at the f finished film and at the animatic, the timing is quite different? Or Yeah, I mean, the, we, we, we'll put up storyboard reels. Like, it's one of the first things we do. If we have a treatment or something, then we start putting up a few tentpole sequences. Um, but the animatic, once, once the whole story reel is done, we'll put it up and tear it down numerous times. We'll, we'll do it over and over again over the course of three years, at least. Um, we use story reels for about the first three years, um, even while we're making the film. We're still using reels because it's that, you know, the process doesn't allow you to m do the computer animation all at once, so there'll they'll be storyboarded sequences for, for years until we have the time to make them. So, yeah, it's totally iterative. We, we just put it up, tear it down, put it up, tear it down, and try to make it better and better every time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, are there more questions uh, in the back? Uh, being so fully iterative, uh, how do you know when it's done? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, how do you we, know? 
We, we never do. I, when, I, it's, when we run out of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the release date is the only reason these things come out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hi, my name is Nico. Um, you said you watched the movie about a thousand times. <laughs> How do you keep it not boring for yourself? Because I know when I watch movies a thousand times, uh, they will get dull at yeah. some stage. How do you Wait. keep up that? And also uh, compliments to everyone who created all the um, animation. It's hugely impressive, like the fur, how it shakes, you know, mm. brilliant. Oh, oh thank you. Um, yeah, you know what? I think that we all have to watch it a lot, and <clears throat> we're sort of problem solvers at Pixar. We love uh, the, 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 the game of story, and so I feel like as long as there was always something new as we were making it, sometimes it'd be a little tweak to the end, or new animation would be in a shot that wasn't there before, or shots were lit that weren't there before. As long as that one new thing was in there, I felt like, oh, okay, I want to watch the whole movie to get a sense of this. Where it became right. difficult is when you're done. <laughs> because then you realize, like, I'm done. There's no more decisions to be made. Right. Now I'm just watching it over and over again like a crazy <laughs> person. But I still, I still love the movie. I still yeah. can sit down and watch it. But uh, Right. Well, we'll take a break probably and not watch it for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, um, with every Pixar release, um, Pixar release we see uh, something new about animation. You know, uh, maybe... Better, better textures, better lights, or better effects for, I don't know, skin and whatever. In this film, the new film, what is really new um, about animation or, I don't know, technology? Hmm. You know, I think um, probably the biggest thing that we had to uh, kind of conquer on this film was just the sheer scope. Uh, hmm. It's a film that takes place on a university, and we wanted to make sure that we had... Uh, that we could populate it with a, a very, very diverse group of characters. There's hundreds and hundreds of characters in this film, and they're all kind of, they're individually done. We, we wanted it, we didn't want them to all look alike. And so um, we knew that was going to be a challenge, and I think we do have probably the most number of, of different characters uh, in shots in this film than ever before. I, I don't think we, we never would have been able to do some of these shots, you know, back in Monsters, Inc. time. Um, but it was something that we really we knew we needed. We yeah. needed to have that complexity for this film. That was the that was the thing that we knew going in. Um, so that's where we spent a lot of energy was on the characters and the design and the building and animating of all those characters. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question regarding the music and the sound of the movie. So when you compose the music, is it done afterwards? So when the, the scenes are finished, or is it done in parallel because they're already. Mm -hmm. um, there are also some scenes where the music dramatically changes because the scene dramatically changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's done after. Um, the music is done after. That way, uh, the composer, in this case Randy, can, can, can watch the scene and get the feel of it. And we talk about it as well, the yeah. same way I would talk to the animators about it. I talk about what the scene is about and what it needs to do emotionally. And then Randy goes off, and he, in particular, really likes to score to the picture and yeah. hit specific motions and actions. It's part of just the language of the way he works. So, so it has to be pretty, pretty tight and, and, yeah. and, and finished. Yeah. Okay. So now the baby's born. Do you have <laughs> other plans already? Uh, a drink by the pool, yeah. I think, is what we're hoping for. <laughs> no, I think, yeah, a little time off and then, and then no real plans. We'll go back yeah. to work and, and okay. see what happens. Hopefully work together again. Yep. We, had a, we had a great time yep. making this movie. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, thank the you. The movie is out uh, next week, yes. 20th of June. Next week. Corey Ray, Ben Scanlon. Thank ah. you very much for coming. Thank you.